Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Availing Ministries Ignite Prayer Call. I am your humble servant, uh, Prophetess Latarsha Pratt, and um, we're very excited to welcome you to our prayer line this morning and very excited about our prayer focus. I'm going to get right into it because this one is really good and I'm really inspired. I was really encouraged and inspired while I was studying for this one. Um, So the prayer focus this morning is entitled Focus, the the word focus. Um, And I got our focus from um, Nehemiah, the sixth chapter, first to the fourth verses. But I'm going to open up with the definition um, for focus. The word focus defined as a noun is to have focus, um, is to make something the center of interest or activity, to make something the center of interest or activity, or the state or quality of having or producing clear visual definition. Uh, In other words, that's for something, something that is in or out of focus or blurred vision versus clear vision. The definition for focus as a verb is to adapt to the prevailing level of light and become able to see clearly, to pay particular attention to. So in other words, um, sometimes when we come from the light and uh, from the dark, and to the light, it takes us a moment for our eyes to adjust um, to the different level of light. So that's the reference it's making um, for, for for us to um, be able to come into focus, something to be coming into focus for us. Now, um, as I mentioned, I got our prayer call from uh, prayer focus from the book of Nehemiah, the Lord led me to Nehemiah 6, um, verses 1 through 4, and I'll read in the Amplified Version. Now when Sanballat, Tobiah, Jeshem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there was no breach left in it, although at that time I had not set up doors in the gates. Sam Ballot and Jeshem sent word to me saying, come let us meet together at Shephram in the plain of Ono. But they were planning to harm me. <clears throat> so I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a great work and cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave to come down to meet with you? They sent word to me four times in this way, and I answered them in the same way. I'll stop reading there. Once again, the Lord has led us to very familiar scripture that we have heard preached before and taught on before. But he did give me some revelation um, for these particular verses. So I'm not going to go into all of the background because most of us do know the story of what was going on. But we do know um, that when you go back to chapter 2, God had commissioned Nehemiah to do a particular work, which was to rebuild the city of Judah after it was destroyed when they were taken into captivity. So now here in chapter 6, when the work was just about completed, where I read, um, he said that he had built everything back up, and the only thing um, that wasn't done yet were, were the gates and the doors. And then the the, the script, the, the verse of Scripture says, when the enemy heard that the work was almost completed, it's very relevant. So we understand the application that when the enemy sees that we have our hand to the wall, focus on the work, making decisions concerning the work, 
making plans with the work in mind. Our thoughts are concerning the work, as the definition said. It's a, it's, we are particular and attentive um, to this work. Um, our, the measures that we set in place are concerning the work. The people that are connecting to us and being drawn to us are, also have the same focus. They have the same mindset. Um, as they come and join in um, and to assist and support with the work. Um, and they are also concerned, they have the same concern with the work as we do. Um, when the enemy saw this, when the enemy heard this, so and saw that the people were working together and everything was moving in harmony, and when the enemy heard about their progress, this is what he does. They, he put a plan in place. So the first thing they tried to do was lure Nehemiah away from the work and from the place of safety. Because as I studied this, um, something jumped out at me that I hadn't seen before. It says, the scripture said that Nehemiah was well guarded. So um, not they were not only working, but of course they were watching, right? Um, and that he was well guarded. So um, there's no way that they, the, the enemy could have penetrated, right? Because sometimes, you know, we, we, we say that we are busy doing the things of God. Sometimes we don't watch, we don't pray, and we don't have support or guard, that's very important, that those who are connected to us, it keeps coming back to us, um, the theme of, of kingdom, being kingdom-minded and kingdom-oriented means that there is something that we put in our hands to do, but that is greater than us. So it's not just a one-man show. We keep coming back to that, not just a one-man show, but there are, um, we have a need for others who are going to support and also watch as we work. Um, so here we are reminded that the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God, right? So because Nehemiah was in the center of God's will, he was working, he was steadfast, he was um, leading because, of course, there were others there who were just as steadfast following his Example, he was well guarded. He was um, in the right frame of mind. He had the right attitude. He had the right focus. And those who followed him also were on one accord. So the enemy cannot penetrate that, right? So what does he do? So because Nehemiah was in the center of God's will, and so they couldn't just come with an all-out attack, right, because they would have quickly been defeated um, because they wouldn't have been able to penetrate because uh, he was well guarded, right? So they tried to lure him out of the place of safety, and that's something we have to watch out for when we have our hands to the work and God has us in the center of his will doing what he called us to do. We have to watch out for this enemy that comes to distract us, to lure us, to deceive us, and to putting our tools down because that's what they wanted to do and come out of the place of safety. So they tried to bring, lure him out of the place of safety um, uh, to address them. So now the initial approach was a pretense of being friendly and um, pretended interest in fellowship, right? And we do fall prey to that when we're not watching because, of course, we don't expect an attack from those um, who are supposedly in the household of faith and supposedly um, have the same focus and interest as we do. You know, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, uh, same heart, same mind, and all of those kinds of things. Um, but their initial approach was the pretense of being friendly and pretended interest in fellowship. So we have to be careful of that. But thank God for the wisdom and the insight that God had given Nehemiah to know that this was a trap. This was coming uh, to distract him um, and for him to stop the work. Remember, he was almost finished. Everything was done but gates and doors. So the, the scripture says they tried it four times, and he gave them the same answer. What does that say to us, right? Because a lot of the times y'all know that the enemy will come, and, and we will say the first time he comes. 
um, but he keeps coming back looking for that weakness, looking for that place um, to get a foothold in, looking for uh, the button to push, um, that button to push, but we have to be steadfast. We have to be consistent, just as Nehemiah was. So Nehemiah gave them the same response. Man, I'm at work. I'm not going to stop um, because he knew that if he stopped the work, that it would be harder to get started again. Now, anybody who's ever started anything, if you ha- and I know many of us have experienced this. I'm almost there. I got distracted. I, my head was turned away. My attention, something else got my attention or someone else got my attention, and I never finished. I never got it done, right? If you ever been there, you know that it is hard to get started again once you stop. And it also seems like um, in other areas of your life, you're starting and stopping, starting and stopping, starting and stopping. That's because we're not watching, we're not praying, um, and we're not being careful about the work. See, the thing about the word focus is you're attentive to it. Um, and sometimes we don't, we um, are there present uh, physically, but we're not there mentally. We're not there at with the work emotionally. We're not there um, spiritually attentive. Right? We just showing up. We're we're showing up to say we're showing up, but we're not focused on the work. Right. So now um, that's what we that's the reason why we've been starting and stopping, starting and stopping, starting and stopping, because the enemy now he knows how to to turn our head or get our attention when we allow that to happen. But now, thank God, in this season that we're in, the Lord has graced us to get back on the wall and to work vigorously. And to also have the support of others, that's the other beautiful thing that I'm seeing in this season, that there are others just like us who are have also been graced um, to work, to get back to work on the wall and to bring support. And it, it, it's in our coming together, I'm going to continue to say this, um, where we will be successful um, so we understand that we cannot afford to respond to the enemy. It is not that we don't see the enemy. It is not that we don't know what he's doing. It is not that um, uh, we don't see the activity of the enemy. No, it's we do. We, we're aware that you're present. Um, but the thing is, we're focused, right? That's not going to get our attention. And the other thing we learned in this season is that we don't have to respond to everything. Just because he's throwing something at you doesn't mean you have to respond. We don't have to show him anything. Somebody said the best rebuke is none at all, right? You don't have to respond. You just continue to do the work. You stay focused. So now when we read further in this chapter, we find that um, when Nehemiah did not respond to that false fake invitation, Sanballat sent a lie. Oh, this is so good. Then Sanballat sent a lie out. He said, okay, so since you're not going to come and meet with me on a friendly, I'm going to tell people, he's telling you he's going to lie on you. I'm going to send a lie out um, and let tell everybody that y'all are over here planning to overthrow, to 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 um, start a revolution and a revolt, to be a problem. Um, so I'm gonna put a I'm gonna basically put a lie out. So um, he thought that that was going to upset Nehemiah and th- disturb his emotions. So now the enemy can't get you physically, right? He can't get you physically to put that your your tool down. He can't get you to put your weapon down. He can't get you to come down off the wall. So since he couldn't get them physically, what he tried to do now is mess with his mental and mess with his emotions, push his buttons. He So he tried to push his buttons so that he would stop working now to go run after a lie. How many of us have, have ever done that, trying to run after a lie, even in this? Nehemiah did not lose focus, right? So once again, we thank God for the Holy Spirit and the power of God in Nehemiah's life. 
that gave him the wisdom to understand what they were trying to do. They couldn't attack him physically, so now they're coming for him mentally, trying to wage that was psychological warfare. And a lot of us know that most of the warfare is in our mind. Most of the battles we fight are in our own mind, in our own thoughts. And even in that, Nehemiah did not stop the work to respond to this lie. The Bible tells us not to be entangled again. And I love the the reason why I love this focus so much because a lot of the, the principles that God has already given us in Scripture keep popping up with um in 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 this folk in this thing with focus not to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage and what is one of the reasons i'm gonna sit right there for a minute what is one of the reasons we will chase a lie we and and that 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 act is rooted in pride because we want oh um let me get this um together come and get let me get this straight let me straighten you right now the the whole entire thing in this life especially when we are in the will of god and doing what we're supposed to do we're gonna get lied on all the time because the enemy knows the last ditch effort to get at us is to attack our character. But I know from experience that you don't have to answer a lie, honey. You just keep doing what God called you to do. You don't have to offer any defense or any explanation. Keep doing what God has called you to do, and he will vindicate, validate, and confirm. God will do that. I'm a witness to that. So Nehemiah did not stop to respond to this lie. Um, and he kept his focus, and the work remained as the center. Remember, the center of interest, that has to be everything you do, every plan you make um, uh, has to be concerning the work, and the work has to be the center of this interest. So Nehemiah continued with clarity to complete the vision. The last thing I want to pull out before I go into prayer um, is the prayer Nehemiah prayed in verse 10, which is very simple, and that is what we're basing our focus on. But now, O oh God, <clears throat> strengthen my hands. That's simple prayer, right? No robo ta 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 ta. Now, O oh God, strengthen my hands. So now let us pray as Maya did, um, oh, God, strengthen our hands. Father, we bless you. We give you honor. Thank you, God. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, for the prayer focus this morning, coming to remind us to keep our focus to be consistent. And as we stay, we continue to keep the work and focus that, God, you will make the vision plain and you will make it clear. So we come into your presence with thanksgiving and praise this morning. God, we thank you that you allowed us to to get up this morning. We thank you that we had a mind to come into your presence. Thank you that you have gathered us here to impart unto us this morning, to strengthen us this morning, to give us direction this morning to guide us this morning in this work. Holy God, we come to you humble and we ask for forgiveness for anything that we have done or said, Lord God, that's outside of your word, outside of your will, and outside of your plan. God, for anything that we have done that may have misrepresented your character, forgive us, oh God, creating us a clean heart, renewing us a right spirit, Holy God, purge us with his that we might be clean. We are people who do desire to do what you have called us to do, to be what you have called us to be, but we cannot do it without you, Holy God. We are grateful for your love. We are grateful for your kindness. We are grateful for your, keep, for your keeping power this morning, oh God. We are grateful for your mercy toward us and your compassion, hallelujah, that you have for your people. Thank you, God. We are grateful, Lord God, um, that you continue to provide for us, Lord God. Hallelujah. We are grateful, Lord God, that you continue to make us worthy to stand before you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Father God, our hearts and minds are focused this morning on doing your will and completing the assignment 
um, that you have given us, O oh God, completing the mandate and your commission for our lives, for our purpose and our destiny. Thank you, God. But, Lord God, we need you to help us to accomplish what you have called us to do. Hallelujah. This morning, Lord God, our prayer is that you strengthen our hands. Hallelujah. Help us to keep our focus. Hallelujah. Father God, give us clear vision. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Strengthen our focus. God, enable us to see what it is you want us to see. See, glory to God. Sometimes we're looking in the right direction, holy God, but our vision is still blurred. Thank you, Lord. Make your plan and intention clear to us. Thank you, Lord. Give us clarity, Lord God, on how to accomplish this work. Father God, give us strategy. Lord, give us resources. Hallelujah, Jesus. Provide staffing, Lord God. Give us uh, uh, staffing and support this morning, holy God. Raise up rams in the bushes, hallelujah, to underwrite the vision. Thank you, God. Raise up folk, Lord God, who are in places of authority, who are who have know-how, Lord God, who can assist us on the journey, hallelujah, to completing this work and doing it in excellence. In Jesus' name, Father, we stand in the gap this morning also for those who don't have clear vision. Thank you, Lord God, for those for those who have a call, for those who are pregnant with purpose, but they don't have a clear vision, they don't have clear understanding, for those who can't see their way, for those who have been frustrated by the attack of the enemy, we stand in the gap. We also pray for their clarity. We pray for their strength physically. We pray for them mentally. We stand in the gap for their emotion, for their mental, guard their hearts, Lord God. We pray that you will guard their hearts. We pray pray that you will guard their minds, hallelujah, in this perfect peace. Cover them in this perfect peace, which surpasses all understanding, because we know that the peace confuses, perfect peace confuses the enemy now, Lord God. So we stand in the gap, Lord God, for those who are becoming weary in their well-doing. We stand in the gap for those, Lord God, who are stopped at a crossroad and don't know which way to go in the name of Jesus, God. Send them their answer. Give them their breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Make it clear. Hallelujah. Bring them into focus. Hallelujah. As to what you intend for them to do at this place and at this point, holy God, we pray, Father, as you take us from glory to glory, from strength to strength, God, as you take us from faith to faith, anoint our vision and give us a laser focus for this higher height. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and this deeper depth. God, strengthen our focus and sharpen our vision. Hallelujah. Sharpen our discernment at this new height at this new level, at this elevated place, in this elevated place, at this altitude, bring us into focus, adjust our vision, hallelujah, to this higher level for the higher purpose and the higher call. Thank you, Lord God. Help us to remain attentive, Lord God, to the things which are above. Yes, God, help us to Focus on the things, as you have said in your word, to the things that are above and not to that which are below. Uh, Hallelujah. Those things that are spiritual, help us to pay particular attention in the name of Jesus as we move forward in this work. Hallelujah. As we move forward, holy God, in this assignment, thank you, Jesus, we ask that you would strengthen our hands this morning. Oh, God, strengthen our hands. We also pray, holy God, for everyone and everything that is connected, thank you, Lord, to us. We pray for those that are connected to us. We pray for everything that is connected to us. Fortify them. Fortify it, oh, God. Cover them under the blood of Jesus because the enemy knows that if he cannot get us 
to take our attention off the work and to come out and address him, he begins to attack what is connected to us. So keep them covered, fortify them, strengthen them as well in the name of Jesus, that the enemy will find no breach, that he will find no break, no place of contention, no confusion, oh God, or discord, nothing that would distract, nothing that would detract, nothing that would detour, holy God, nothing that would give him a foothold and a means to hinder or to stop us, hallelujah, from doing the work. So we pray for even those that are connected to us, for everything that is connected to us. We pray for every environment, community, every place and every space, hallelujah, that we walk in, that we matriculate to, that the enemy will not be able to find a place, hallelujah, to get a foothold so that he cannot stop the work. Hallelujah. Make us aware of Satan's least device. Hallelujah. Hide us in the center of your will. We cry this morning, oh God, strengthen our hands. Lord, continue to fortify us mentally, emotionally. Uh, We pray that the enemy would not be able to push any buttons, find any triggers um, to distract us. Help us to resist the devil. Hallelujah. Strengthen us to resist the devil that he may flee. In the name of Jesus, we cast down every vain and evil imagination and take captive any thought or mindset that raises itself against the knowledge of the truth. Hallelujah. God, we continue to declare that we are doing a great work and cannot come down. We cannot come down to address lies. We can't come down to address foolishness. We can't come down to address tantrums. We can't uh, uh, come down to address nonsense, Lord God, nothing that has anything to do with us. God, give us supernatural strength, health vitality, hallelujah, to be full of energy and vigor, Lord God. Bless us, Lord God. Make us wise, yes, God, and prudent in our decisions. Thank you, Lord God, even in our decision-making. Help us not to take anything for granted, but show us what to do. Show us what to do with the resources that you bless us with. Make us good stewards, Lord God, over the resources that you bless us with. Guide us, Lord God, in managing the overflow that that you're sending to us, oh God. We ask, Lord God, that you would strengthen our hands in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you would make the crooked straight. Hallelujah. We ask that as we move forward, Lord God, that you would bring the high places down in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Now more than ever before, help us to strive, holy God, to acknowledge you in all of our ways. Hallelujah. So that you will direct our path. Thank you, God. Let us take nothing for granted, holy God, but to bring all things to you, to pray over every area, to pray over every component, to pray over every position in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So that whatever is connected to us also will be your will, that whoever we connect with, it'll be your will. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father God, help us to understand even more, thank you, Lord, that our ways are not your ways and our thoughts are not your thoughts. We cannot take anything for granted. We cannot apply earthly wisdom, Lord God, to this heavenly mandate. Um, So I pray this morning for the visionaries, for those that are pregnant with goals and ideas and concepts, holy God. Lord God, we continue to cry that, that you would strengthen our hands. Hallelujah. And give them a laser focus this morning. Yes, Lord God, I pray for them this morning as you bring them closer and closer to the goal. Lord God, as you guide them, hallelujah, to the promised place of worship and release as you take them to the place, hallelujah, where they are to release and birth out, Lord God, these ministries, these businesses, these ideas, 
Hallelujah. Yes, God. I pray for the trendsetters. Yes, those that uh, this morning that are walking out uncharted territory and uncharted paths. I pray for the forerunners, Lord God, who have gone ahead, Lord God, to set things in order and to establish your kingdom agenda. Yes, God, we establish, establishing with our eyes. We thank you because we're about to see what our eyes have not yet seen. Thank you, Lord, and our ears have not yet yet heard. I pray for the forerunners because they, they seem to feel alone. Thank you, Lord, on this journey that you have put them on. Hallelujah to lead your people, but I pray for them, their strength, their resolve, hallelujah, and their focus in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we continue to cry this morning uh, that you will strengthen our hands. I pray for every pastor, every leader, every business owner, Lord God, everyone who has leadership, everyone, Lord God, who has their hand to the work, everyone who has their hand to the plow, everyone, Lord God, who has uh, submitted themselves and committed themselves to fulfilling your mandate, we pray for them this morning. Cover your people, bless your people in the name of Jesus. Let there be an overflow, hallelujah, of a resource, an overflow of support in Jesus' name. Father God said that your kingdom may be evident and manifest in this earth in the name of Jesus. Holy God, we cry strengthen our hands today. And as we move forward, even on today, God, we thank you, but to lead us to the place of provision, hallelujah, and help us to take another step in completing the work, Lord God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Once again, this morning, those who have joined us on the call, we are grateful for you. For those who are going to be visiting us via the replay. We we are grateful for you as well, and we continue to encourage you to stay focused, hallelujah, on the thing that God has called you to do, hallelujah, and pray this morning, hallelujah, if you don't remember anything else, Lord, strengthen my hands, hallelujah. This has been Availing Ministries Ignite Prayer Call. Um, we say God bless you and have an amazing day.